opportunity to hang with some of my friends. It's so good to see you. For those uh, watching virtually, we welcome you. We appreciate you being part of this community. And we have a quote to get us started by Guy McPherson. If you really think the environment is less important than the economy, try holding your breath while counting your <laughs> Yes. Okay. We have an opening prayer, and today's prayer will be led by our prayer chaplain, Helen Shoemaker. And she is available also for one on one prayer immediately after the service. Additionally, well, in my case, additionally, if you could, if you have a prayer request, there's a prayer request in the box that you can fill out, and it is prayed with the uh, prayer chaplain team, and then passed on to Silent Unity, which holds it in prayer for 30 days. Okay. okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Everybody, take a deep breath. Hold it, and then let it out slowly. And as you do, enter into your heart space. Where God resides, all good resides, all peace resides. And in that place, we join together as the beloved community, Unity of Hagerstown. We extend our love to everyone in the community, everyone in the wider community, everyone in the world. Seeing each and every person as the perfect expression of God's love, compassion, and kindness. We are grateful for this community, this beloved community, where we are safe, we are accepted, and we are loved for who we are. And again, we extend that to the community in general and to the world at large. We give thanks for this beautiful day. We give thanks for the very good food we know that is waiting for us after this service. And above all, we give thanks that we know we are the presence of God in the world. We know this. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 And if you'll join me in our mission statement together, Unity of Hagerstown, a welcoming community, embraces spiritual awakening through affirmative prayer and meditation, creating a positive path of abundant unity for all. And now we have the reading of the daily work with Amy Manette. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today is Sunday, April 21st, and our word for the day is appreciation. When someone admires my efforts or thanks me for something helpful I've done, I'm happy to know I've blessed them. Recognizing how good it feels to be appreciated, I remember to express my gratitude and appreciation to the people who have blessed me. I appreciate my friends and family by nurturing those relationships. I appreciate my community by being a responsible citizen. I appreciate the natural beauty of the world by caring for it and taking time to enjoy it. The people, the places, and the things I appreciate become more precious to me as I discover that each reflects God's presence and God's activity in a uniquely beautiful way. I am grateful to have so much to appreciate. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. From Romans chapter 12, verse 10. And please join me in repeating the phrase on the screen. I appreciate the good in my life. Let that sink down into your heart space. And think of the appreciation you have for everything in your life. And repeat the phrase again. I appreciate the good in my life.
and so it is. Thank you, Amy. We have a time to greet our neighbors, and I would like to invite you, if you if you see someone you don't know, to just to go up and introduce yourself to them. And again, this is not the time to share our life story. <laughs> it's a time to just greet our neighbors, say that we're glad to see them. And this is a huggy crowd, so if you are not a hugger, I invite you just to put your hand up or a handshake or just maybe even namaste. It, you know, it's any form of greeting is welcome here. So let's greet our neighbors. Out. Oh, one more thing. Uh, we are we are streaming this on Facebook. It's later put up on YouTube. So if you would like to greet the, those who are watching, just walk right over to where Ken is seated next to the phone, in front and back of the phone, and say hello to our virtual viewers. Okay? Let's be our neighbors. Hey friends, I wanted to say hello, give you a personal uh, welcome. We're so glad you're part of this community. I say it every week, but you know I mean it. We appreciate your being here. We appreciate your support. Have a wonderful day, and you know, I hope you enjoy the music today. It's a little bit different. Here's BG. <laughs> Thank you. 
doing what we can do to walk lightly, um, reuse, recycle. We know this. And yet there is more that we can do. But I would say that it's not only an ethical duty, it is a spiritual responsibility as well. Because we are interconnected with all of creation, woven together in spirit of spirit. And we have a connection with the source of wisdom within, bringing to bring forth these creative solutions. Perhaps not those sitting here today, but and perhaps maybe you, you can, but certainly collectively we can bring forth solutions, such as using fungi in such remarkable ways. You know, we often state in unity to look for the good. But this is not to say that we don't see and acknowledge the state of the environment. We can hold the facts of a situation and know that there is a higher truth as well. We do it in our daily, our personal lives. We are a human having, having we are also divine. I was said that I was, we are a spiritual uh, being having a human experience. So we can look at the environment, we can mourn for what we see going around, we can acknowledge the feelings that come up and, and know that there is more. We can know that as humanity, we are collectively equipped to have come up with solutions. Alexander tells us that we can use the infinite creativity within to maximize renewable, resourceful, and responsible means of meeting our needs, not just as a responsible act, but as one that demonstrates our relationship to all creation. So we can make that shift from feeling fear around the environment to knowing that there we can create a balanced relationship with Mother Earth. Now this does require mindfulness, but mindfulness is part of our spiritual path. Alexander tells us we, if we are indeed one with all that is, then accessing our carbon footprint on a regular basis can and should be part of our spiritual walk. Mindful connection and thought leads to mindful actions and choices. So again, pivoting our energy from what's going wrong and uplifting what's going right increases what's going right. As we learned last week, when we bless something, it activates the power of multiplication. So collectively, bless those who are coming forth with these creative ideas, you know, and, and see that that is multiplied as well. Where our attention goes, our energy flows. This is true individually as it is true collectively as well. <coughs> Again, we can hold these two things in my, in, together in mind. The state of the environment, and knowing that there is a higher truth, that God is present everywhere, moving through us, as us, to find solutions. So I have another story, just in case you're wondering if it's just the fungus among us. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's from Africa. It's a very innovative African project, um, Trees for the Future. Farmers have been in the habit of planting just one or two crops in Africa for cash. And certainly we understand that, you know, to, in order for them to get ahead, get, get those mono, monoculture cash crops. But Trees for the Future is um, inviting farmers to plant a more diverse Forest garden is what they're calling it, that feeds the family, that protects the soil, and that it expands tree cover as well. In fact, the United Nations Environmental Program believes in this project so much that it awarded it the status of World Restoration Flagship. It was founded in 2015, and the program has planted 
tens of millions of trees each year since then, all over, well, maybe not all over, but in nine different countries in Africa. In less than 10 years, it has restored a combined area seven times the size of Manhattan. And this includes another African um, project called uh, the Great Green Wall, which is a planned barrier of vegetation to hold back the desert's encroachment, which is a real problem. So organizers say that that vegetation barrier is going to be the largest natural structure on the planet, but it's still a, a work in progress. So Trees for the Future has plans to reforest um, parts of Africa as well as combat poverty, and by 2030 it aims to create 230,000 jobs and plant a billion trees. That's, that's quite the effort. And I want to say that, you know, we hear, and maybe we've read before of people who have, or projects that have planted trees. The one thing I like about this is that there is care for, ongoing care for the trees. They're just not planted and left. Um, so the way that I understand it works is that they have groups of small holding farmers, small holders um, of 100 acres or less. And those groups are divided into subgroups. And each subgroup has a lead farmer who is given a small uh, payment for his services in which he leads regular meetings for the farmers to get together and report and train and have access to tools, access to seeds as well. You know, this is such an important project, I believe. Um, Africa, it's, the projections are that it's going to be home to a quarter of the world's population within a generation. And as the continent can, continues to increase the desert space and the, the, the soil that, that once was fertile, it becomes unusable, we have a real problem. So trees for the future, fantastic thing to do. The, each individual farmer on average is planting 5,800 trees. It's like, yeah, and they're taking care of them. They're not just planting them, they're taking care of them. So monitoring the trees is a, is a key element in this program. So we can tell ourselves a different story as far as the environment goes. Alexander tells us the infinite intelligence of the universe facilitates itself in, through, and as you and me. We each play a significant part in a global shift in consciousness and reharmonizing humanity with nature in a way that reveals the beauty and balance of our oneness. Our, you know, I think we can see this. I have just a few other real quick examples, like Brian Slapped, who started the Ocean Cleanup Project at the age of 18, and in one year, well, he developed technology that works with the ocean currents, and in one year, he removed more than 100,000 kilograms of plastic. I'm not sure how, what that relates to, if, can, if anybody knows how much that is in pounds. And then Ron Finley, in his early 30s, started guerrilla gardening to provide residents in a uh, food desert in LA uh, access to fruits and vegetables. And then there's the ghetto gastro started by three friends in their 20s trying to provide healthy, vegan, non-GMO foods to poor districts in New York. Charles Filmer, co-founder of Unity, tells us that our consciousness is our real environment. The outer environment is always in correspondence to the thoughts making up our consciousness. If we collectively believe 
that there is a solution to the environment, then more and more people will be stepping forth with this solution, with a solution. Now, we may not all be led to plant trees or clean the oceans, currents of the plastic, but we all can do something. And by shifting our consciousness about around this problem and seeing that, yes, it is a problem, and yes, we can find the solution because we are one with the divine. We are one with the divine mind. We have been given the gift of imagination and wisdom, and we can together figure this out. And then also look for ways to lighten our own footprint. We begin at home. We begin at home. So we're going to move into a time of meditation. But first, I invite you to join me in this affirmation, if you like, together. Today, I bear witness to the environment and place myself under service to the healing of the world. So we're going to start... Uh, making ourselves comfortable as we move into a time of meditation. This will be a guided meditation, followed by a period of silence, and we will end it with a song, another song by Luke. So as we adjust our position, paying attention to our breath. And just allow any feelings to come forth when we think about the environment now. Whether it's fear or despair, whether it's neutral, whatever comes forth. Hope, whatever comes forth. Honoring those feelings. Breathing into them. And know that this is part of our human experience. And yet we are made of spirit. We are one with all of creation. One with the one. We are one with divine mind. That wisdom within that we can connect to comes forth in wonderful ways. We take a moment to acknowledge all the good that's being done around the world. Not just the stories shared today, but those that we may not even know about. Individuals going forth and cleaning up the street, planting a garden. We send a blessing out to each and every one. And as we continue to sit, Allowing that connection to spirit to come forth more fully, focusing on our heart space, that center of love. Let us send out love to Mother Earth. The beauty found, the diversity found, the incredible awesomeness found within Mother Earth. And then I invite you to be open and receptive to that activity of spirit within that may be leading you to your next steps of what we might be able to do. Perhaps it's to 
switch from plastic water bottles to something that is reusable. Or to plant a small garden. Or just to continue in prayer for the wonderful solutions coming forth all over the world. And as we sit restfully here, we go into a, a moment of silence. This is an internal silence in which we calm our thoughts. <clears throat> and we just be receptive to that activity of spirit within. in the silence. And as we continue to sit restfully, let us allow this next song just to wash over us.
Just let go of those obsessions, those rival wars. Pushing you towards haste and remorse. Why the good head of peace come to you? First class. Well, you can feel it in the air. You can feel it through your heart. Electric love just got a jump start. Thank you for the life of you. Thank you for the hope inside you today. Thank you for the beauty that surrounds you today. Thank you, Luke. Beautiful song. I invite you to join me in our prosperity affirmation together. Prosperity flows freely through our church, nourishing our ministry while enriching the lives we touch. We are grateful stewards of all that is given, using it wisely to create a legacy of love and service. And we have our offering and another song during the offering. Spread your wings, endless will dream. Find 
Please sign up. It's open to anybody who would like to come, but we do need you to sign up so we have enough food prepared. And on the 26th, we have dinner and game night. I think there's a sign-up sheet going around for that as well. And if you're able to come, it's always a fun time with community and getting to know everybody here. You just don't know how competitive people are until you play a game with them. <laughs> okay, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> Okay. The Sound Bath, which is a monthly event, is always the first Wednesday of the month. That's coming up as well. And in May, we're having a Wednesday speaker series. This is um, a video of Reverend Linda Martella Witsek. She is a Unity author, Unity minister. She's a fabulous speaker. I hope you come to this series. There's more information on the flyer as you walk out the door in the foyer. On the 11th, night, we have. <laughs> On the 11th, we have a cleanup day with St. Mark's. Our, our lease contract uh, obligates us to clean, help them clean up the campus. And, and you know, I don't think we're laying down mulch this time, but we are cleaning up some of the flower beds, I believe. And then um, Saturdays, we've reinstituted our walk and talk meeting down in Williamsport along the canal. It's a lovely time of just well, walking and talking, what else? <laughs> what else? <laughs> you know, getting to know each other. And there is a sign-up uh, going around for the Zion Soup Kitchen, which we, where we serve once a month. And this is to provide food for those who uh, can, can use it. Whew. So at this time, I'd like to say goodbye to our, our virtual friends. We're so happy that you joined us today. We love you. We bless you. Please put something in, in the comment section so we know who you are. And thank you for being part of this community. <laughs>